you're asking about my health I don't have answers No resolutions Don't know what I think I've been myself in ways That I shouldn't That I don't mind Losing my sanity I wonder if I'm missing out on Jesus Christ If I am Tell him that I'm not hard to find Cause I'm always here Sitting in this room on loan Chilling away At this body I own I got books about religion I try to read Oh, and I try to see but I don't believe anything These thoughts, they, they press my mind more than they used to I'm feeling claustrophobic I've got no room to breathe Christ, if I am, tell him that I'm not hard to find, cause I'm always here, I'm sitting in this room on loan, giving away this body I own. Well, I, I want to be angry and I want to be aware I want to be faithful and I want to be fair I want to be dangerous and I want to be dirty I want to be steady, want to be sturdy Steady, wanna be sturdy, and I wonder if I'm missing out on Jesus Christ. If I am, could you tell him that I'm not hard to find? Cause I'm always here. I'm sitting in this room on. Sipping away at his body I own. I wonder if I'm missing out on Jesus Christ. If I am, tell him that I'm not hard to find, cause I'm always here. Sitting in this room on own, giving away at this body I own. March of 2020. I had 
been home for about a month um, with my roommate, and then my best friend came to live with me for the first couple months of quarantine. And um, though they were with me, I spent a lot of time alone and a lot of time thinking about who I was and who I wanted to be and about what outside factors created that and what inside factors created that. And, you know, I wanted to be a better person, an honest person, someone, I, I wanted to be someone that I, that I liked and at the time I didn't feel like I was and I wasn't sure how to get there, you know? Um, I feel like missing out was a breakthrough for me of um, kind of an understanding of myself and what the different energies around me and within myself we're doing to um, <laughs> change and grow who I was. And also, a lot of people at the time were talking about how COVID was an apocalypse and how it was like the rapture and, you know, Jesus was coming back. Mm -hmm. And I was like, is he? You know? <laughs> like, I don't know, you know? Right. And so um, I think that there was a lot going on within me in my life that was causing me to think about, you know, spiritual things, but also the world was, I, I mean, we, we were all there, you know? Right. <laughs> like, everybody was like, we needed an explanation for the things that were going on. And, um, you know, maybe Jesus was coming back. Maybe he, I don't know, maybe he did. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> but, we're still here. Yeah, we're, we're still here. <laughs> um, do you find, I mean, like growing up in such a, a rich, uh, religious home and environment, do you find a lot of spirituality making its way into your to your lyrics? Either intentionally or yeah. unintentionally, just because it's in your DNA? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think I'm a very spiritual person. My mom is a very spiritual person, so I'm sure that I got that from her and kind of, um, I haven't carried everything with me from my childhood as far as the religion and um, all of that, but I think that I deal with life in a spiritual way and a in a way of thinking that there's so much more than me, you know? And so I kind of live by that more so than anything. I spent an afternoon with indie rock Americana singer, songwriter, Chloe Beth Campbell. We sat down in someone's fancy house, grabbed a bite in Bricktown, opened up the bar at JJ's. I asked her a ton of questions and she gave more than a few answers. Speaking with her, with her radiant smile and bubbly laugh, was a nice shift from the often world-weary conversations I have with fellow travelers. Chloe Beth sings with earnestness, an eyes wide open look at herself and the world around her. She has soul in her voice and her heart on her sleeve. I started playing guitar because I was on track to be a worship leader. That's what I thought I wanted to do mm. at 11 years old. <laughs> and so I knew that I wouldn't be able to do it just vocally, that I would probably need to be um, like a band leader and um, be able to, to carry everything more than just vocally. So I started playing guitar. Music wasn't uh, as big as it is in some other households, you know? Like, n nobody plays instruments or anything like that, but my mom led worship, and we spent a lot of time in church for the first seven years of my life, like, nearly every day in church, and my mom was always singing. Now, what about secular music? Were you also listening to the radio? How did that, how did that happen? Um, no, not at all. We... Really, not at all? So... From the time I was born until we moved to Oklahoma, which was when I was six, um, we were in a Pentecostal church, and we listened to no secular music. It was all worship music. And you're in Florida. Florida, okay. mm -hmm. yeah. yes. And so, yeah, a lot of my, the very beginning of my musical experience, I guess, was just completely Christian. Um, some of it was folk, some of it was worship music, um, very charismatic, very expressive. Um, and then when we moved to Oklahoma, I started listening to, uh, I think Dave Matthews Band was one of the first uh, bands my mom showed me that wasn't a Christian band. And Tom Petty, mm -hmm. we would listen to Free Fallen, and I remember her saying, this really isn't a very appropriate song 
but I like it. Like, and now going, I cover that song, and now listening to the words, I'm like, this is mild, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I was very sheltered in the, just for the first few years of my life, like for the first six. Okay, so when did you start writing your own songs? Um, I think I was 11, and it started out as poetry. Okay. Um, Christian, or like religious stuff? Or? Somewhat, yeah, and I was a really moody 11-year-old, like very um, introspective, and I think I still am just talking about my feelings and, you know, very, like, emo stuff. Um, but I also did write lots of Christian music in the beginning. She grew up religious, found music in and around church before seeking an audience and perspective and maybe purpose elsewhere. The way that resonates in some of her songwriting, that kind of searching gets in your bones. I spoke with her mom after the interview. Nikki said she remembers Chloe Beth getting one guitar lesson, coming home and writing a song. She described her daughter like some kind of owl, wise beyond her years, and recalls her assertive as a child. She'd helped her score her first couple of gigs in an open mic or two, and Chloe Beth just took it from there. When you figure out who you are, I guess, you get to it. I usually turn on my voice memos and record whatever I'm doing, and then just kind of sing out. And then I go back, listen to the voice memo, write down the words that I like, and then it's a back and forth process. Um, I have had some songs that I've written from journal entries mm -hmm. um, where I take pieces of um, what I've said in this journal entry and then um, turn it into a song. Like, I have a song called Inconsistency, um, and I wrote that one from a journal entry. Okay. And just switched a few things up, but it's almost literally just a diary. <laughs> yeah. I was having a conversation with my wife about my own writing and, and how I, um, I don't tend to treat it so much as a vacation, but as a, and maybe as a way to hide from reality. I find that when I'm happy, I don't write. I'm too busy living, yeah. you know? But then it's like when I'm sad that I need to escape. Yeah. Do you find a particular mood uh, that you need to be in when you're creating? I mean, can you do it at any point or do you? Generally, when I'm super anxious, I write the best. Really? Um, yeah, it's very strange. Like on the days where I've just been wired, um, with just really high like energy and, you know, have had many awkward encounters with people and can't really speak <laughs> correctly. <laughs> That's <laughs> then okay. usually I, uh, for some reason, I, I don't, I've never thought of this until just this moment, but usually when my social interactions and my awkwardness are, my, just me is enhanced kind of being, um, yeah, awkward is when my writing is best. I think it's helps me to be within myself. Um, more, but yeah, anxiety is my mood. <laughs> well, that's, that's miserable. Um, I, well, I, it, that actually fits uh, something I read where you were talking about um, having to censor, censor yourself sort of in your day to day, but that your songs are a place where you can be sort of unfiltered. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that you're more honest or you're able to be more honest? Songs are less directed at people in a way, you know? Um, when I sing songs, I, no one ever knows who they're about. Usually they're about more than one person or sometimes they're even directed at myself. But in a conversation, you can't look at someone and be like, hey, you kind of suck, you know? You can, <laughs> I mean, you sometimes can. <laughs> it's necessary, you know, in communication. And as an adult, I feel like I'm learning how to um, be less brutal with, with communicating and working on, um, you know, better relationships and all of that. But I think songwriting is this space where um, it's open to so much honesty, but there's not um, as much like of a punch, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, it's less hurtful in my opinion, or maybe sometimes more. Cause I don't believe that fire was made to burn. It's just made to light up. The room, no, it doesn't know what it can do to cry a river. 
Chloe Beth possesses some kind of innocent wisdom, same that invented the necessity for Hallmark cliches like Old Soul, and she's talented enough to be burdened or maybe cursed with the weight of another profanity, that of potential. What a nasty word. Still, she's revelatory now with the whole world in front of her, and it's a mistake to underestimate her because of her age. Her feistiness and defiance betray a stubbornness well past her years, and her understanding of the human condition is doggone gorgeous in her song lyrics. I mean, a couple years ago, I wrote a song, and the first line is, I'm sick and tired of being told that I look so young, but I act so old. Um, and <laughs> okay. I'm just quoting myself now. Right. But um, <laughs> I, that's how I felt at the time, and I was like, I, I think... For many years, I was like, I thought that the only reason people thought I was good was because I was so young. You know, um, I used to interpret it that way as, right. um, oh, you're good, but it's just because you're 12, you know? It's like an asterisk, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, it's like, you're good, but, you know? Um, and then now as I'm older, I do I do take it as a, I say I'm older and we're talking about how I'm young, but <laughs> I'm older than I was yesterday. And <laughs> that's pretty yeah. profound, yeah. <laughs> um, I take it as a compliment, um, but I also take it with a grain of salt because I think that though there are areas that I may seem um, more mature in, there are a lot of areas that I've got a lot of growth to do that I'm not as mature in. So I think I just, I'm like, I, I don't know. Nowadays I take it as a compliment, so. Yeah, you should. I was a complete dipshit at 21. <laughs> I am too. <laughs> I am too. That in these seconds you mind, in these moments we are blind, we are blind to the world, but our spirits are intertwined. Normally, I'm, I've got so much going on in my head and in my world that I struggle to connect with myself. And so yoga really helps me to connect with myself. And then because I can listen to my thoughts and my feelings and understand what's going on there, then I can translate that to songwriting. I think um, I've really noticed a difference in my songwriting since I've do started doing yoga just because it's much more honest, it's much more real, and um, it has more depth, in my opinion, than before. I think I still have a long way to go <laughs> and lots of growth to do, but yoga really has um, has gotten me further along, I think. I mean, you've kind of mentioned a few times about uh, dealing with anxiety, either through yoga or through your songwriting. I mean, is that something that's been there since since day one for you as an artist? Yes, yes, absolutely. I, I have a ton of anxiety and I, I learned to cope with it. I think that doing music and being out in the world <laughs> um, has really uh, helped me to learn to cope with it and to do different things to, to deal with it. But yeah, I definitely struggle with a, a lot of anxiety. And I think it's, I don't think it's because of music. I think that it's just a part of my day to day and then I don't think music causes it. I think that it, it helps it, if anything. Do you still get nervous on stage when you go? Oh yeah, a hundred percent. I get real shaky and... Um, still? Oh yeah, definitely. I even, I play the deli every Monday and even when I go and play the deli on Mondays, which is, it's like family there, you know, the people who come, I love with my whole heart. Um, and they love me and I know it, you know, mm -hmm. but still I'm like, <laughs> I get real wired and like, hi, you know, <laughs> and then I finally ground myself and <laughs> calm down. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a constant thing. Chloe Best's drive is admirable. She released a grassroots album when she was 17, another remnant the year after. She also recorded a duet record with Chris Blevins and has a new single coming out this month. On top of that, she bartends has an internship at Tower Theater and Lunar Manor Studio, and she's in her last semester of school at UCO Academy of Contemporary Music. She started playing with a band after our interview, put together a show in September, and it stuck. And it surprises me hearing that, to be honest, as personal as her songs are. But she says she loves the connection of the energy she gets working with others. You started playing in bars when? 14. 
that's about the, that's when you started playing just anyway. The first place I played besides church and like at talent shows was a, a bar. Did your mom have to like sign the waiver and go in with you and all that or? She was there with me. She took me. She was like, we got done with church and she was like, we're going to open mic. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Do you know what you played? I played the song Coconut Skins by Damien Rice. Okay. Um, and I thought it was real bad because it says um, a bad word in it, the A word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was 14 and just left church and was like, "Yeah, I'm pretty cool." All right, edgy. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm very interested to, uh, speaking with folks uh, about their journey, uh, the highs and lows, you know, and because it is very difficult to do what you're doing, I think, mm -hmm. you know. And a lot of people highlight the the good times, but they don't know about the bad ones. So, can you tell me about a a time or uh, a period where you wanted to quit, mm -hmm. and then what brought you back uh, onto the stage or in front of the microphone? There have definitely been many times where I've considered stopping. I, I think the most recent time, and honestly the most serious time for me, was uh, in the beginning of 2020, so January-ish. I really was just, um, I was tired of, I think playing music is wonderful, but it's a lot of traveling, it's a lot of late nights, it's a lot of social socializing. Um, there's a lot that goes into it that takes energy. Um, so I was just kind of tired and I wasn't sure. I'd been doing it so long and thought that that was what I wanted to do for so long. And I was getting to the point where I was like, what am I doing, you know? And um, I felt very much like, I think I was struggling with imposter syndrome. I still do, but um, I have this song that I wrote called I've Been Lying, and it's literally like, I feel like I'm walking around just faking it through, you know? And I'm not, I, I feel like I am genuine, but as far as like, who, who, like, who qualifies you to walk on a stage, sing your songs, and think that, that that's justified, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I struggle with that still, but I think at the time it was, a really big struggle for me. And so and so the pandemic happened and all of my shows got canceled. And then I was like, I think this would be a great time for me to just, you know, stop. Because no one would know, you know, it could have just been the pandemic happened, life changed, and yeah. what a perfect time to quit music. <laughs> right. Um, and so my friend Claire had come to stay with me for, I don't know, a while during the pandemic. and. I went and sat with her in the room we'd allotted to her and was talking to her about it. And she started crying and she was like, "If you cannot quit, you cannot. And she'd never expressed to me before that she had even enjoyed my music. And it's not because she's not wonderful, it's just that's not where, uh, right. it's not the discussions right. we ever had. We've been friends for a long time and we laugh together and talk about other things, but it's never been a topic of discussion. And I think I needed uh, her to say to me, um, you're, you're on the right path and you're doing the right thing. Um, and so here I am. <laughs> okay. That's fair. This profession is so high and low constantly, you know, day right. by day. It's right. high and low. I can play, you know, for in front of thousands of people and then the next day be in front of three people who don't listen, you know? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, I did Mile Zero Fest in 2021, so this year, and um, people, I had three standing ovations at the show, and it was really neat. Um, and then people came up to me afterwards, and they were like, you made me cry, I connected with you, and um, I think, Honestly, anytime I have a high, it is whenever I feel like I have connected to people. And yeah. um, not just that I have connected to people, but that my songs have resonated with people. Um, you know, when they come up to me and they say, this song meant something to me, even if it's not what I intended, I think that that is the, that's kind of what I, what I do it for, what I live for. With film, with music, 
maybe just with life in general, there's this concept of making it, you know, like I'm gonna make it, you're gonna make it, whatever. With the, the road that you're on and, and your own life and your own goals, what do you consider making it in regards to doing what you do? I think it changes uh, constantly. When I first started making it was playing music for a living. Um, I wanted to be, I wanted to be Ali Harder and I wanted to make music and make money making music. And um, I still want to be Ali Harder. I think everybody <laughs> wants to be I her. I do too, yeah. Um, but then when I turned 18, and I went to college, I started playing music for a living and I was making money and I was like, oh, I'm here, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so that's changed. I think for me now, I'm honestly not certain. I'm just kind of, I'm in a little bit of a limbo. Like I'm, I'm happy with where I'm at. I know I have to move forward towards something else in my music career, but I'm, I'm not sure where that's at and I'm kind of okay with it currently. Um, but yeah, I think it changes constantly and because hopefully you're reaching your little goals and then, you know, right. they change each time, but yeah. She laughs a lot. It's contagious and freeing in conversation. But her songs will break your heart if you're not careful. She's there in the spotlight, perching barefoot balanced on the teeter-totter of strength in her voice and vulnerability in her lyrics. Or maybe vice versa. And whatever she's seeking, I hope she finds her way there and then writes a song about it. <laughs> 